Ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids across our beloved empire, welcome to today's video where you and I are going to be doing a Kyle Katarn initial gameplay review. And I want to start off with this. You guys remember the good old days of Modern Warfare 2 gaming. You and your boys in the lobby, you got the crappy little popcorn mic from the cereal box. You pull a 360 no scope around the world and get the final kill in a search and destroy game. I can tell you this, CG decided Kyle Katarn needed a little bit of that inside of galaxy of heroes the latest character to be present in the game and today you and i are going to talk about how this character is really bringing rebel fighters to a whole other level and he just simply has one of the most satisfying abilities this game can possibly offer so if you're ready for today's domination go ahead double tap that triangle button max out your sensitivity do a 360 no scope and smith oh shoot Larry play an ad. I think he's down. Larry play an ad. Hurry up right now. Give me a medic. It's sponsor time. That's not a moon. It's a great channel legends. Now you guys know that Raid Shadow Legend boasts over 600 champions, but they also feature a variety of bosses to tackle on. And today, you and I are gonna talk about the Arcane Keep, which is protected by Sir Galaroth. Now, first thing I wanna say, unlike all these other guys here, Galaroth isn't a d He's been tasked with protecting arcane knowledge, so only the worthy can use it. How do I take this guy down? On his basic attack, dealing a ton of extra damage to any champions without buffs, so make sure you got tons of buffs. But you gotta be careful because his minions like to strip away those buffs on you. There's a ton happening in Raid this month with special events every day and a bunch of new awesome champions and a brand new feature called the Guardian Ring that gives you a load of new ways to use your champions. You want to make sure you're here before December because Raid's releasing one of their biggest, most anticipated features ever. I have another great champion that you can get for free if you scan my QR code or go to the links down below in the video description. And if you're a new player, you'll be getting an epic hero, Chonaru, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, one energy refill and one ancient shard all this treasure will be waiting for you right up here but you gotta be quick because these rewards are only available for the next 30 days don't worry i think gary's all right <laughs> yeah right gary oh yeah i'm doing great so he's doing perfectly fine let's go ahead and nosedive into the gameplay firstly big thank you to everyone who came out on thanksgiving day we had a big turnout and it was a lot of fun it was more of an expedited initial test because we had holiday stuff to get going to but nonetheless we learned a lot in the short amount of time the main highlight i think is it seems like there is a possibility you might need to work out the kings and mechanics a bit but it seems like with some good mods and the right rng you can take out some ray teams with Kyle Katarn because you don't even need fast mods on this character and he can open up with a ton of turn meter and pretty much he can outrun some of the fastest characters in the team when with rebel fighters yeah he probably can't outrun galactic legends but nonetheless there's a scenario where he's at 270 some speed and the chat kind of did a little bit of quick math hypothetically he can have like 380 plus speed after that initial 30% turn meter boost in a complete rebel fighter lineup. We're going to showcase a little bit of that. I don't know if I can say it's 100% guaranteed to take down Ray, a galactic legend, but it's seeming like it's definitely a possibility. It's going to need some fine tuning to make it work. And I think the overall our idea here, he pulled chat at the end of the stream. He definitely is a night level character, but they can, they can bump to like a night plus master category character. When in the rebel fighters, he's got a lot of lucrative tags. Rebels jedi and rebel fighters however despite having lucrative tags he reminds me of asajj ventress yeah asajj ventress has a separatist tag but she doesn't seem to offer much to the separatist crew and that's just like how kyle katarn is rebel and jedi are some of the most lucrative tags in the game and yes he can work with them he'll benefit from the synergies being fed to him but it doesn't feel like he's feeding synergy to the rest of those teams and that's really where the main focus is the rebel fighter tag now of course he does have jedi synergy more specifically for territory battles if you apply the omicron but we do not have the omicron yet and we don't have a light side GOTV. so i'm gonna say put up uh, put a little pin in that we'll get to that later on but i want to showcase this you just show, saw darth revan get absolutely mutilated by wow, Kyle Katarn. Here we have Kyle Katarn with Rebel Fighters versus Ray, And it can get a little tricky here. And I want to give a special shot to Playbook. While we were streaming yesterday, it looks like he also was doing some testing and got a little clip 
showing him taking out Ray and Rebel Fighters with our first impression with our mods that we have, which are pretty average mods, nothing absurd, no crazy high speeds. Very tough to kind of pull it off. But once we said, all right, let's really try this. We put some crazy mods on Cara Dune so she can open up shortly after Kyle Katarn. Kyle Katarn in this gameplay is modded for roughly 272 speed. And that puts him over 380 speed because with his unique ability, Blue Milk Run, he is going to get 10% Terminator for each other Rebel Fighter on the team. Unfortunately, Mon Mothra isn't a Rebel Fighter. Combat Carl, the deployable Rebel Fighter unit from Mo Money, it doesn't start right away. So really, you're going to have three other Rebel Fighters. Hot Rebel Scout Pow are a must, even before Kyle Katarn. And that last slot seems like Cara Dune is the one to have. So he's going to get 30% speed. Open up. And the good thing is, he's going to get that first play, hopefully get Hoth Rebel Scout to get the assist. And when Hoth Rebel Scout is attacking on his basic, he has a chance to be turn meter to the rest of the team. And if you can get Cara Dune, it's like the core play is to get Cara Dune out there before Finn starts spreading inspiration and she can go ahead and remove turn meter. And once you remove turn meter from the full team, you want to blitz down Ray, get her into damage, you want to quickly let her get out. And before she gets into ultimate, ideally, you want to go ahead and delete her right away. Now it's not always going to work out perfectly. We're going to show a win and we're going to show a loss right afterwards. We had a situation where we were just getting too much turn meter. And if, as you know, Ray, when you're getting turn meter in your team, you're potentially feeding mastery increases or you're increasing the stats of the raid team. So there was a situation Ray got stuck in damage immunity. We couldn't quite line it up to make sure we killed her with, before, with, with, with uh, damage immunity expiring. So we went into ultimate and we were pretty much feeding turn meter to our team, feeding stat increase to the raid for like two minutes straight and she deleted us. Point being is, I don't know if we can say it's 100% guaranteed, but I think once the community spends more time playing around this team, we might be able to fine tune it where it could be a possible reliable ray counter down the road the only thing to make note of is rebel fighters get a lot of revives with mo money motha but you can't quite revive after a sudden whirlwind was just thrown into your face that's the most important thing to note here but we were able to take out some other great teams but we had some trouble with some teams i was expecting them to do to do better against darth revan i don't care if you have the fastest darth revan in the game kyle katarin as long as you kind of get him around 250 260 speed you should be able to outrun every single Darth Revan out there because that initial big turn meter boost for your team. Kill off Bass LaShawn, and then once you go ahead and make sure you line up just the guy with the lightsaber, the 360 degree no scope around the world, seismic toss to the face. Literally, I feel like CG took one of my core fair phrases I use for Ezra and some other characters and brought it to reality. With this ability, just the guy with the lightsaber, he can do some pretty serious damage in here. And it seems like he can consistently one shot a Darth Revan, even in a situation where he had offense down. Pooh! Darth Revan was deleted. Very satisfying ability. And we're gonna talk about mods more towards the end, how you should mod him. And since speed doesn't seem to be a primary factor for him, you can really juice up the offense on Kyle Katarina. We'll talk about the more nitty gritty stuff later on. But moving on, we gotta talk about the other core things about his kit, and that's the power of the valley. Speaking of power of the valley, whew, that marquee event had some really nice backgrounds out there. Hope the CC to implement that in other areas of the game. But despite that talk about that valley, this is interesting because this is where the Zeta kicks in. And part of me thinks you can get away without the Zeta on this ability, but it is gonna be nice. With power of the valley, can we bring it up on the screen? Larry, I Gary, I don't know where that guy went, but hey, thanks, Larry. With the Zeta here, if Kyle Katarn has Jedi Knight, which we'll talk about how he gets to that if you don't remember, instead inflict Force Influence to all enemies for two turns. Force Influence is a completely new debuff in the game, which prevents assisting, counterattacks, and gaining buffs. And if you're a raid boss or galactic legends, it just reduces your counter chance on those particular individuals here. So the benefit is here that you're going to, once you get the Jedi Knight, which is very easy to do with that blue milk run unique ability here, let's go ahead and knock it down to tier seven. First thing, every time he is being called to the assist, he's getting a, for, a stack of force connection. Very easy to do. And once he gets the force connection 10 times, he turns into a Jedi Knight. So after he finally reconnects the force, he's full blown Jedi Knight and getting those extra abilities. Like for example, being able to apply force influence on the entire team rather than just the target enemy that he's looking at here so the zeta is nice i don't know if it's one of those zetas that you need it to make it work there's a lot of characters like oh yeah you, you really need that zeta to make things work like dash rendar if you want to get prepared characters to do some crazy stuff you really need that zeta to make it happen it's a nice zeta but it's a zeta that you're not going to enjoy until a little bit more 
the late beginning, early mid part of a battle because he needs to assist basically 10 times, which with the Mo Money team, she's able to get him to assist quite a few times. That shouldn't be a problem nonetheless. But I think the other important thing to note about him with that blue milk run, the unique ability where every time a rebel fighter ally is attacking out of turn, they're getting 12% offense, which is stacking until the end of their next turn. And keep in mind, this is a stat sharing team with the rebel fighters. And this is how Kyle Katarn is really able to push out some pretty monstrous damage with that just a guy with the lightsaber capability overall i do like this character i, I gotta say dashford i really set the bar high for marquee characters lately because he took a team that was relatively trash and brought him up a few tiers rebel fighters already were decent to begin with they got some stuff done and he it's, it's hard to compare because it's like taking a toyota prius and make it faster than a tesla plaid edition but here we have a Porsche and we got a little bit more speed out of it. So it's, it's, it's an increase for the team for sure. Able to beat Darth Vader, possibility of beating Galactic Legends. Had a hard time with Commander Luke Skywalker, General Anakin Skywalker. And surprisingly enough, still a hard time with Grievous. And I think the problem is Grievous can keep up with all the turn meter gains that Rebel Fighters are getting with the Hoth Rebel Scout because of B2 constantly feeding Terminator, all the target lots getting spread out there. So Grievous, oddly enough, still seems to be more of a complication <laughs> than Galactic Legends Ray was. Let's quickly talk about mods before we go out here. We already talked about the Zeta. I can't give you an opinion on the Omicron right now. The Omicron is where he's finally going to get more Jedi-specific synergies, but it's only more specific to Territory Battles. And Territory Battles Light Side is extremely important in territory battles if you do apply that omicron enemies can't gain bonus terminator which is great which is going to stop those b2s from getting terminator and force influence can't be resisted and we are going to talk about force influence one more time when we get to the mods and then when kyle katarn attacks out of turn he gains additional stacks of force connection and the bonuses of jedi Knight apply to each other jedi allies and that's where the big stuff starts kicking it and then of course at the start of each encounter all jet and rebel fighter allies are going to get 75 percent bonus protection until the end of the encounter and at the start of each encounter kyle katarn gains 10 percent terminator for each other jedi ally so i said one of my critiques is that despite having the rebel and jedi tag he doesn't seem to work as well as i would like outside of territorials in territorials this might be helpful for crafting leftover rebel fighter jedi teams after going through the whole entire platoon process we we'll have to wait and see. Importance uh, uh, Omicron, I think, for Terra Tabels. But last thing we got to talk about are the mods. I don't think you can convince me you need a speed set on this guy. Unless you're using him outside of Terra Tabels, no Omicron, and you're using him with Jedi, okay, you might want more speed. But his primary purpose seems to be Rebel Fighters, and we don't have a lot of speed on him. Focus on the offense. Heck, even throw an offense on the primary uh, arrow right here. I recommend either offense or crit damage on the triangle right here. I think offense is going to be the way to go on this cross or potency. And that's what I want to get into the second part. Offense sets a no brainer. The second set crit chance makes sense. So we can make sure he gets those big critical hits like we saw against Jedi training rain to Darth Revan's earlier on. But I think an argument can be made for potency. One of the issues I had of Kyle Katarn, I felt like I wasn't getting force influence to apply nearly as much. And I kind of found the problem incredibly low potency, 26% in our testing, which is one of the lower potency characters I've seen in a while. So potency set after the offense set and a potency cross might be worth going the extra distance so you can ensure when you're using power of the valley before Jedi Knight, you're getting that force influence on the character you really want to make sure you're controlling. And of course, when he becomes Jedi Knight, you want to get all that force influence to guarantee to apply because unlike things like Echo's days or Dash Rendar's days, you can resist this force influence. So I think potency might also be a good argument uh, for this character. So nonetheless, fun marquee character, really liked him. It took a little bit of time to kind of understand what his purpose was for the Rebel Fighters. And the Rebel Fighters, unlike Dash Rendar's prepared crew, I feel like Rebel Fighters are a more logical team. They're kind of a team you need to build up, especially if you're gonna lead up to Jedi Master Luke Skywalker down the road and Kyle Katarn being needed for Star Killer, as we know. I think he's a bit more logical, whereas Dash Rendar is helping out more niche things out there, like the prepared crew. So you guys let me know down below. What's your initial impression of this guy? I gotta say, I'm not disappointed. It's kind of weird that he has a hard time with Grievous, but can beat Darth Revens and can come maybe beat Ray teams nonetheless. Grievous is still a metalloid monstrosity, hence the name on his unique ability there. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your time here. And of course, big thank you for coming out, supporting me on the stream. Great seeing each and every one of you guys. But what's also important is to always remember that it's great to be in the Empire today.